this morning I want to just stop right there. We could, I could preach on the counselor. I could preach on the mighty God. I could preach on the everlasting Father. I could preach on the Prince of Peace. But this morning, I want us to think about, I think many times we just lose sight of who God really is and who He is in our lives and what He's done for us and all that He is. And I want to focus this morning on why Jesus would be called wonderful. My God, he's wonderful to me. I don't know about you. But we want to look to the scripture this morning. I just want to, I want to exhort the church this morning. I want to edify the body this morning. And reminding us why Jesus would be called and is still called. And forevermore will be called wonderful. Jesus. Now I want you to don't misunderstand me. Jesus has always been. Jesus didn't show up, just show up on Christmas morning in Bethlehem. He's always been. But I want you to know that Jesus was wonderful in his birth. Why would Jesus be wonderful in his birth? Well, first of all, he didn't have the same father that you and I have. You and I are the seed of Abraham. Therefore, you and I were a fallen nature. You and I had the Adamic nature. You and I were born into sin. But Jesus was born of God. Come on now. He was born of the Word. That's why in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh and dwelt upon among men he was wonderful in his birth because he was not tainted by Adam he had a different father and his father was God and yet Jesus uh, came and in, to the virgin Mary and how did that happen that was a wonderful thing that the Holy Ghost uh, overshadowed Mary the virgin Mary my God the woman who had not known no man and she said how is this possible me be with child knowing uh, that I've not known a man and she and the Gabriel said all things are possible to him that believe and she said uh, she was told that the Holy Ghost uh, is going to overshadow you and you're going to conceive in your womb uh, you're going to conceive a savior you're going to receive a demon you're going to receive a you're going to bear forth a healer a deliverer and his name shall be called Jesus, he was wonderful in his birth. Uh, when he was born, it was wonderful that the whole angelic host uh, appeared before the shepherds and saying, Peace uh, on earth and goodwill towards men. For born in this city of David, this day is born the Savior, the Christ. Uh, he was wonderful in his birth. Born like no other man. Brought into the world like no other man. See, you got to understand that he was completely God, but he was completely flesh. He was 100% man, and he was 100% God. But everything that Jesus did, he did as a man and powered by the Holy Ghost. Uh, it was wonderful when Mary fled. She was, she was in trouble. She didn't know what to do. I mean... Quite frankly, Joseph could have had her stoned to death. Uh, she was betrothed to Joseph, but Joseph being a just man. My God, that's what we need in our churches today. We need some just men. We need some men that will stand on the Word of God. Men that have patience. Men that won't just automatically throw a stone. Hey, man, or oh me. I don't know where I'm going with that, but just hang on for the ride. He was a just man, full of compassion, and decided to put her away quietly. But while he was doing that, the angel of the Lord came to him and said, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. She's still just like your founder. She's still a virgin. And what she's got inside of her, how God is born of the word of God. Don't be afraid to take her. And, my, and there, but she ran to her cousin, Elizabeth and begin to say what had happened to her begin to give the salutation how she was conceived and now was carrying the Christ child the babe inside Elizabeth's womb John the Baptist began to leap within the womb of Elizabeth being full of the Holy Ghost inside the womb my God that's what we need we need some young people we need some middle aged people we need some older people we need some gray heads full of the Holy Ghost of God can you say amen 
there's one thing I pray. Almost daily, I can't say I pray every day, but one thing I'm consistent in pray. I pray that my grandchildren, that minute they were a minute, they understand that they need to be saved, that they receive Christ and are baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire. My God, it's time that we begin to teach about the baptism of the Holy Ghost again. Quit putting it off in a back corner. My God, I thought we was Pentecostal people. Come on now. It's time we teach a baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus was wonderful in his birth. Can you say amen? Never again will a man be born like Jesus. And he was the only one that needed to be born that way. Because he is God's only begotten son. And the scripture says if you believe on him you will not perish. But you will have life everlasting. He was wonderful in his birth. But Jesus didn't stay a child. He grew the Bible says he grew and he began to, fa- began to grow in stature. And he had favor with man and with God. We know very little about the childhood of Jesus other than the account that we read about at the age of 12 how he was left. Moms and dads, you might have messed up, but don't feel bad you've not left your child behind. I mean, if you did, I mean, it was, a, it was, it was a day and a half before they realized he wasn't with them. And they didn't have no cell phone to call and check on him. But they found him in the temple. If I could say anything to the young people today, that's where you need to be found, in the house of God. I know you got a lot to compete with your time. I know you got a lot of temptations to compete with your time. But if I can encourage you to be anywhere, be in the household of faith, be in the household of God, can you say amen? And yet he became a man. Jesus was wonderful in his ministry. Acts in 1038 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost in power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him can you say amen Jesus at the, about the age of 30 he came one day out of nowhere seemed like uh, he just came like he'd been out and all of a sudden he appears and he's walking down on the shores and he, there all of a sudden John the Baptist sees Jesus and he says behold uh, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world every person that day knew exactly what John was talking about uh, and Jesus goes down and he gets baptized in the Jordan and it to fulfill all works of righteousness. It was a transfer of the priesthood. He was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And there John the Baptist working in a priestly role baptized Jesus. And Jesus come up out of that water. And the Spirit of God The Spirit of God came down on him like a dove and he went into the wilderness and therefore he was confronted by the enemy. He was tempted by the devil and he overcame the temptation. And when he came back, he came back full of power. He came back full of glory and he was wonderful in his ministry. The first place he went was to a wedding that we read about. He was wonderful at that wedding. I'm going to tell you when you don't have enough, you got Jesus. Little as much when God is in it. They had run out of wine, and and Mary said, uh, Jesus, we're out of wine. And Jesus said, that's not my problem, so to speak. What's not my time? But she goes to the disciples and says, whatever he tells you to do, do that. And he says, fill up the water pots. Don't seem like it makes a lot of sense when you want wine and you put water in the barrel. And then he tells the disciples, says, go and dip and give to the governor. They dipped out water, I, I no doubt. I don't know when it went from water to wine, but it happened before it touched the man's lips. And he said, this is the best wine. See, he was wonderful at the wedding in Cana. He was wonderful in ministry. He was wonderful to the woman at the well who was beat down, who had a life full of despair and heartache 
who had had five husbands, and now she was living with a man that wasn't her own. She, I mean, she was looking, had been looking for love in all the wrong places. He was wonderful to her when he said, I have a water that I can give you, and you'll never thirst again. He was wonderful to the man in the tombs, a man who was possessed with a legion of devils who cried day and night, who would cut himself. No man could bind him. They would bind him and he would break the, the chains. He would break the feathers off him. And yet he was wonderful. Jesus was wonderful to the man in the tombs. Here he was like a wild man, a lunatic, running day and night in the mountains, crying and weeping and howling and carrying on and cutting himself. And when Jesus, we sung that song this morning, oh, he touched me. No doubt that's what that man said. Oh, this man named Jesus, he's wonderful. He touched me, and I'm not the same. Here, my God, there people was hurting hogs all around him. They wasn't scared of him. He was acting like a, a lunatic, a wild man, and they wasn't afraid of him. And they come back because, you know, the demons went into the pigs, and the pigs went off the cliff and drowned. And so they had to go tell the owners of the pigs, hey, we got a problem. And they come back, and now they're afraid of this man. He's clothed, sitting in his eating and right in his right mind, and now they're afraid of him. But he was wonderful. And I'm going to tell you, if you've ever been bound by the enemy, if you're bound by the enemy this morning, he can be wonderful to you too. He was a wonderful to the widow woman whose son was dead. The woman had nothing now. And Jesus comes along. The funeral possession. And raises this man from the dead. How wonderful that is. And thank God. Thank God Jesus declared he was the resurrection and the life. He was wonderful in his ministry. He was wonderful to the ten lepers. He was wonderful to blind Barnabas. He's been wonderful and still is wonderful in ministry of the countless people that have been set free, delivered by the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was wonderful to the man with the withered hand who had to expose himself. He was wonderful to the man that was a paralyzed and had to be let down through the roof. He was wonderful. To every person that he touched, he was wonderful. See, everybody that came to Jesus went away different. I said, everybody that came to Jesus went away different. Not everybody went away following Jesus. And today, when you go out of here, you can make a decision on how you leave. But when they yielded to Jesus, they went away different. They went away changed. Now the rich young ruler went away different, but they're not the right different. He went away sorrowful. But it didn't change the fact that he was still wonderful in his ministry. He's wonderful. He was wonderful to those that were oppressed. He is wonderful to those that, are, that have been bruised. He come to set at liberty them that are bruised. He was wonderful in opening the prison doors for them that are bound. I said he is wonderful. Isaiah said he shall be called wonderful. And he was wonderful in his ministry. He was wonderful in the storm when the ship was going down. And he said, peace, be still. He was wonderful in his birth. He was wonderful in his ministry. And Jesus was wonderful in his death. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says, For he hath made him to, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. How wonderful it was. How wonderful Jesus was, even in his death. See, he that knew no sin became sin, that you and I,
can become the righteousness of God in Christ. How dare we get up and say, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. What a slap in the face to God to say that. When I just said he declared that we were the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If you're a sinner, get saved. If you're a sinner, quit it. Repent and move on. And begin to walk in the righteousness of God. But he was wonderful in his death. Jesus allowed himself to be beat, to be whipped, to be stripped. I know all of our little paintings we see of Jesus, we see him with a little some kind of covering over his, over his midsection. That ain't the reality. Jesus hung on that cross in his birthday suit. For all lookers and all passers-by to see, he was wonderful in his death. He was striped. He was beat. and he, His blood was all over that place that day. His blood was in the judgment hall when they punched him and they yanked out his beard. His blood was at the whipping post where they laid stripes up and down his back. His blood was where they had set him down and slammed the crown of thorns on his head. His blood was there. His blood was all over that city. His blood was all away from when he picked up the cross and carried it up to Golgotha. He was a bloody mess. And his blood was all over the cross. And he was wonderful in his death. Because if Jesus hadn't have died, you and I would have no hope. You and, ha you and I would have to die for our own sins. And we have no atonement within our blood. That's why Jesus was wonderful. Let's go back to his birth. Because he was a perfect, sinless Lamb of God. His blood was the only blood that could atone for the sin that was required. The punishment for sin was only could be atoned for through the blood of Jesus. Now think about this. Jesus was there on the cross. All kinds of strange things was going on. Three hours it was dark during the day. And Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The first time that Jesus had ever experienced separation from God. We can't never stand before God and say, God, you don't understand. You don't know what it's like. See, you and I were born separated from God. And today, if you've not been born again, you're separated from God. And you're lost in your sins. And Jesus, for the first time ever throughout eternity, he knew what it was like to be separated from God. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me he was wonderful that he would allow himself to be abandoned by God for you he was wonderful in his death but it doesn't stop there he was wonderful in his resurrection see if Jesus had stayed dead you and I would have no hope. I think Corinthians says our faith would be in vain, our hope would be in vain, our preaching would be in vain if he had not risen. But he did rise. Can you say amen? And Jesus was in the lower parts of the earth. Amen. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that. Jesus went down to the lower parts of the earth. Jesus went down. Come on now. If he didn't go for it, you're going to have to go for yourself. But there he was three days. 
He said, just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth for three days. And there he was, there in the lower parts of the earth. He was in Hades. He was in, he was in hell. And there on the third day, death couldn't hold him. The devil couldn't hold him. All the demons in hell. Am I preaching to anybody in here? I said, all the demons in hell couldn't hold him. Our sins couldn't hold him. And he came out of there on the third day, victorious over death, hell and the grave. He was wonderful in his resurrection because if he'd not raised, everything that you and I stand for would be null and void. He, he was there in his resurrection body and he came out. He was wonderful when he stood before Mary and he called his name. I tell you, it's a wonderful thing when Jesus calls out your name. Come on now. It's a wonderful thing. It was wonderful to the two men on the road to Emmaus as he expounded on the scriptures and our hearts and their hearts burned within. It's a wonderful thing. I think every Christmas there's a movie comes out called It's a Wonderful Life. I've never seen it. I mean, I just I ain't seen it, okay? But I know it's I know it's a movie called A Wonderful Life. I'm telling you this, this life in Christ is a wonderful life. He was wonderful in his resurrection. And he comes to his disciples and he says, All power and all authority has been given to me. He was wonderful in his resurrection. See, Satan had some authority over death. And hell in the grave. And Jesus said, now all authority has been given to me. See, was, when, he come out of, when he come out of the lower parts of the earth, he led captivity out. All those had been waiting for the promise, he led them out. That's why the graves, many in the graves in Jerusalem busted open when he come out of the grave. Many that were dead got up out of the graves and walked around the streets of Jerusalem. Now they had to die again, of course. What a Savior we have. How wonderful He is. In His resurrection. And there before His, his final departure back into heaven. In His resurrected body. He tells the disciples. He says, go wait in Jerusalem till you receive power from on high. And He begins to ascend up in heaven. And He goes out of their sight in two men in white apparel come out of the cloud and said, what do you stand here gazing for? This same Jesus whom you see taken up shall come again in like manner. You see, word Isaiah where I said the son, a child was given, that was his birth. A son shall be given, that was his death. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. That's not yet happened. But one day that's going to happen. Jesus is going to be the king of this kingdom. He ain't going to ask the Senate what they think. He ain't going to ask Putin what he thinks. He ain't going to ask little rocket man or whatever his name is what he thinks. Amen. See, Jesus will be wonderful in his return. Let me read to you this morning in closing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Very, very familiar scripture. Paul says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead and Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm telling you, Jesus will be wonderful. The church will be caught up with him in the clouds of the air. I don't know about you, but that makes me get excited. My God, Jesus, one day, this Jesus that we've hoped about, this Jesus we've preached about, this Jesus we've sung about, this Jesus we've lived for, one day he's going to step out of the clouds of glory and he's going to say, come up hither, and those that are in the grave are going to come out. Oh, how how wonderful that will be. The graves will bust open. And those and we which are alive shall be called up together and ever be with the Lord. He'll be wonderful when he comes back. And I'm going to tell you today. There's a lot of people that are not ready. There's a lot of people living a lie. There's a lot of people that are bound up in religion. There's a lot of people bound up in false hope, and they're not ready. But you're not going to have time when he says, come up hither. You won't have time because we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I don't know how fast the twinkle is, but I know this. You're not going to have time to get ready. But this morning, you got time to make things right with God. you got time to repent. you got time time to call upon Jesus. you got time to call upon this wonderful Savior named Jesus. He will be wonderful when it catches away the church. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace what a day, what a day, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. See, we look through a glass darkly now. That's why we prophesy in part and we know in part. But then we will see him face to face. And it doesn't matter if you believe in a pre-trip, bib-trip, post-trip, post-wrath. Jesus is coming back. And it ain't no time to be playing around with the things of God. It's never been a time. But it's definitely not the time now. Less than a month, our whole, our whole world can be turned upside down. Today, there's people that's lives will be turned up. One decision, their lives are turned upside down forever. But I can tell you this. You can make a decision and sell it in your heart to follow Jesus. And it will alter your life, not only here, but when you leave here. He should be called wonderful. I don't know about you. But I can tell you this. He's been wonderful to me. And I'm just like you. Sometimes I get down. Sometimes I get frustrated. But I can tell you my God has never failed me. There's some times that look like he was failing. There were some times that didn't look like I was going to make it. There were some times I began to even wonder myself but as I wonder I'm reminded of the wonder of Jesus and the government will be on his shoulders because after that like say ever how you believe that's okay but Jesus is going to come back in all of his glory His vesture is going to be dipped in blood and he's going to have on his thighs written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's going to come riding on a white stallion. And he's going to put his, put his foot on planet Earth. And he's going to right every wrong that's ever been done. And he's going to walk into the temple in Jerusalem. And he's going to set up his kingdom for a thousand years. 
and reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. After he puts the Antichrist, the false prophet and the beast, and all those that come against Jerusalem, when he puts them underfoot, And the saints of God will rule and reign with him. I don't know where God will put me, but I'll be all right if he puts me in City Hall up here. But folks, I'm being serious now. If you don't know Jesus... I'm not talking about knowing about Jesus. I'm talking about knowing him. I, I won't bore you with, all my t- with my whole testimony, but I just want to share you something. Because you'd be hard-pressed to live in this area. I've lived in this same county my whole life. And from, older, so f- is from the time I could know anything, I knew that that God was God. I, I knew that. I knew that God had a son named Jesus. I knew that that son died and rose again on the third day. I knew all that. I knew it. And you couldn't make me believe otherwise. But I didn't know him. I didn't know him. And it's good that you know those things because that's the foundation. But you've got to know it in your heart. And then confess it with your mouth. And I want you to remember this, and I'm done. There's no way to encounter Jesus and remain the same. You may backslide, yes, it can happen. You may mess up, yes, that happens. But his seed remains in you. And you'll be quick to repent. And this morning, I just want you to know, He can be wonderful to you. He can be your wonderful Savior. If you're sick, He can be your wonderful healer. If you're bound, you can be your wonderful deliverer this morning. But the choice is up to you. Joshua, in the book of Joshua, God said this. I have set before you this day, today, I have set before you this day, life, and good, death, and evil, you choose. What you do with what you've heard this morning will be up to you. But Jesus, everything that he did and everything that he is, is wonderful. Let's stand together.